subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated with the latest videos from School of Technology Management and Engineering and MIMS in the A very good afternoon to everyone present here. I, Maitri Jain, with Naina Sahu, take immense pleasure in extending a very warm greeting on behalf of NMIMS School of Technology, Management and Engineering family in Dodd. Allow us to welcome you all to AICTE Training and Learning Faculty Development Program on Internet of Things. The first two sessions were on knowing extract transport load, cloud application, data management, and case studies in IoT. Now this session will be focusing on developing applications in IoT. We would like to refer here our Holy Granth, Sri Bhagavad Gita, chapter number two, which says human has five senses, that is eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. We sense and feel everything by them. Humans have now developed sensors and place them in hardware devices and home appliances like AC, LED lights, and all the devices are controlled by sensors and which in turn are controlled by a central unit. And this central unit can be smartphone or Alexa, which works with the help of Wi-Fi network connectivity. This is called IOT, Internet of Things. So let's find out how IOT systems can be used to support numerous applications, ranging from home appliances, such as automatic lights, to medical science, where life-sustaining devices, such as human heartbeat monitoring system, etc. Before getting into the session, we would like to inform you all that a feedback form will be floated in the chat box. So I request you to please fill in the necessary details correctly as attendance will be provided on the basis of the submission of the form only. We feel extremely honored to introduce you all to Dr. R.S. Tiwari. Dr. R.S. Tiwari was a senior faculty at the School of Computer Science, YCAM, YCM Open University, Nasik. He has been awarded National Science Talent Scholar in 1971 and Yashokirti Award given by CSI Nasik in 2002. He has an experience of 44 years in the field of computer science. He has also worked as scientist in MERI for 20 years, where research was carried out on satellite image processing, computer graphics, and mathematical modeling. He has designed many courses on data mining, neural networks, bioinformatics, data integrity, mobile commerce, and IoT learning kits, etc. And not only that, more than 10 of his research papers had been published in national and international journals and conferences. We feel privileged to you to have you today, sir, with us. I now request sir to share his valuable inputs to the audience. We would like to request her uh, to share his valuable inputs, please. So. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. Friends, I'm Dr. Tiwari. And on today's agenda, we have IoT project development, waterfall model, agile methodology, and project development case studies. 
IoT finds applications in many areas. Some of the important sectors in industry and business are shown on the screen. We have application of IoT in a smart home, smart city, building automation, agriculture, dairy farm, transport and logistics, retail, healthcare, manufacturing, and many more. So from the point of view of today's agenda, we have to discuss how to develop IoT application in any one of these areas. Friends, as discussed yesterday, any IoT device is capable of measuring, monitoring, controlling, reporting, storing, and exchanging the data. There are four important parts in any IoT device, which we call as thing, namely electronics, software, sensors and actuators, and the last thing, network connectivity. Mobile is an important device possessed by almost all the professionals in the country and anywhere in the world. It is this device through which we share our information with our friends and we also monitor and control many of our devices through this mobile phone. Now, the infer, uh, as far as the IoT application is concerned, we have to collect data from the field, process that data, get some insight, and based on that insight, make some decision. And once the decision is made, we send commands to control something in the environment. So as discussed yesterday, we have sensors which measure physical quantities like temperature, humidity, light levels, and so on. And on the screen, we have some examples of sensors. And on the screen, again, we see a big list of sensors. Now, the choice of sensor depends on the type of application that is uh, at our hand. Similarly, we have to select you know, uh, appropriate actuator to uh, <clears throat> make some changes in the environment. And then we have to also consider microcontroller like Arduino or it could be Raspberry Pi. So with this small or a brief introduction, let me continue to today's important point that is IoT project development. So let us start with a very simple application. Now, this is a very simple application. There is a home and cooking is done using LPG gas cylinder. And as you know, that sometimes suddenly um, a cylinder becomes empty and housewife is in trouble to um, uh, cook food. And moreover, she is, she is in trouble when suddenly some guests arrive and she's not able to uh, prepare tea for them. So she has to rush uh, to the neighbors to get help. This is because there is no indication, there is no way of knowing when the gas cylinder is going to uh, become empty, get empty. So can we use IoT device 
to sense the emptiness of the cylinder and send the alert or message as soon as the level of gas goes below certain threshold. So friends, now I would like to ask you how to proceed and do this project. So uh, I welcome audience to raise hand and ask the question, uh, I mean, tell the solution. I mean, what kind of sensors are required? What kind of microcontrollers uh, we can use? And how to send the SMS and all such things need to be done. So what would be the first stage, a step? Naturally, the very step, first step is to know the requirement of the project. Here requirement is very simple. Housewife will fix some threshold value, let us say 10 kg normally, uh, gas cylinders come with 18 kg of weight of liquid uh, petroleum gas. And she can set the threshold of, let us say, 2 kg. So as soon as the gas level drops below this threshold, she should get reminded either through the buzzer or by the SMS. At the same time, SMS should go to gas cylinder firm or office and book the cylinder. So this is a simple requirement. Now let us discuss how to develop this project. Uh, is anybody uh, would like to uh, share the experience? or you can share your ideas and concept. Uh, Gaurav sir, uh, am I uh, audible? Uh, hello. Uh, okay. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. You're audible. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, no, again, I will share my screen. Hello. Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay, okay, fine. So uh, uh, would anybody like to uh, share the, the idea how to develop this project? Okay, fine. Well, <clears throat> what we will do, uh, like a weighing scale, where we measure our body weight, And on this trolley, we will keep the cylinder. Now on the trolley that is beneath the cylinder, we will have a lower cell. Uh, we will have called as lower cell. I will show you the picture of lower cell. Thank you. 
Uh, this is a load cell. Uh, you can see a uh, load cell looks like this. So this is an aluminum bar and you have to connect these wires to the, this small A to D uh, amplifier is there. So you have to connect this to the amplifier and then you have to connect this amplifier to the Arduino board. This load cell is capable of measuring the weight. In fact, this same load cell is used in all the weighing scales that you see in the shops or um, in the uh, weighing um, uh, scale where we measure our body weight. So we will keep that kind of load cell beneath this cylinder and there will be Arduino board over here. And the weight of the cylinder will be measured and sent to the Arduino board. And Arduino board will actually uh, do the processing and uh, keep on watching the load of the cylinder. Over a period of time, as gas is being used by the housewife, weight of the cylinder will keep uh, dropping. And when uh, weight of the liquid uh, petroleum becomes, let us say, 2 kg, immediately Arduino will raise the alarm. Raising alarm means, uh, I hope you already st um, uh, studied the function digital write and digital read. Uh, it will raise one of the pins as a digital write. And then uh, through the GSM board, we will also require a GSM board through which the uh, SMS will be sent. Now let me give you some idea about the uh, GSM board. Now you can see now uh, this GSM board. So such a GSM board, you can purchase from the market. And in this board, you have to insert uh, the SIM card. Of course, to send SMS, you require a service provider subscription. So uh, you can uh, take out the SIM card from your mobile phone and just insert uh, into this board. See, there is a uh, uh, socket available over here. Here, this is a socket. So through this, uh, through this socket, you can insert your SIM card. And when Arduino board uh, sends the alarm, the SMS will be sent to your um, uh, that uh, housewife as well as to the gas agency. Okay, so in this way, the SMS is sent to the uh, housewife as well as uh, office of gas cylinder. So it's very simple. So developing IoT project for such a simple application is quite straightforward. And here we get the connectivity of internet via GSM board. So housewife has to simply put this uh, cylinder on a smart trolley and forget. So Arduino microcontroller will keep on uh, checking the weight of this cylinder and send the SMS to the mobile phone of that woman as well as um, uh, SMS to the gas agency. So this is how we develop uh, <coughs> IoT project, very simple case. Now let us uh, go to another case. Now this is, let us say, smart dairy. There are, let us say, 
a thousand cows in a dairy farm. Now, what can we um, um, uh, say? What kind of application can we develop for the dairy farm? If you are asked to develop an IoT <coughs> application for this dairy farm, naturally, you would like to visit the dairy farm and talk to the owner and get the requirements. So the very first step, even in this, um, say, uh, example or a project is to get the requirement. So again, I will tell you what kind of requirements are uh, here. So here requirement is which cow is ill, which cow is giving milk, and which cow is pregnant. So owner of the dairy farm is interested in getting the information regarding uh, sickness of the cow, that is, uh, which cows are uh, ill, which cows are healthy, and which cows are pregnant, so that he can plan the diet appropriately. So now, how to develop this? Uh, IoT application. So naturally, in order to diagnose or in order to find out which cow is sick or ill and which cow is giving milk or healthy and which cow is pregnant, naturally you have to do some kind of measurements. Now what measurements are useful? Yes. So uh, temperature of the cow's body is important. If you measure the uh, temperature of the uh, body of the cow, we will be able to know whether <coughs> cow is ill or not. Moreover, from the temperature of the body, we can find out whether cow is pregnant or not. Another thing, uh, whether cow is giving milk, so for that and for uh, uh, for confirming whether cow is ill, uh, we will have one more set called as accelerometer. So when temperature sensor and accelerometer are put on the body of the cow, now putting these two sensors on the cow is very simple. We can have a neck band and on that neck band we will uh, put the uh, sensor. Now, the healthy cow will keep on, uh, uh, say, uh, moving here and there. She won't, I mean, uh, sit, uh, stand and still. So she will make a lot, lot of movements because she is healthy. So from the vibrations picked up by the accelerometer, we can know that cow is healthy. If cow is not making uh, much movement, that means she is uh, sick. So in short, by <clears throat> using appropriate sensors, we are able to identify these three types of cows. Now, there are thousand cows in the farm. So how to identify a particular cow? then we have to use one more sensor called as RFID. So this RFID sensor has a unique number. And by uh, <clears throat> uh, retrofitting or what we can say, putting these RFID cows, uh, RFID devices in the ear of each cow, we will come to know the number uh, uh, suitable identification number of each cow. And that is how we will identify which cow is sick and which cow is uh, healthy. So in this way, having three sensors, we can solve the problem. Now the next problem is, owner may not be available all the time in the dairy farm. So he may be traveling, he may be at his home or wherever, he should get this uh, uh, information. And for that, we need to connect or we need to send the data <clears throat> of all the sensors on all the cows uh, through the internet to the mobile of the owner. And moreover, the information should also go to the uh, dietitian uh, who will be feeding 
uh, appropriate food or diet to the cows. So in this way, we use three sensors uh, mounted on the neck belt, and then the, that data uh, uh, is sent through the router to the cloud. Yesterday we saw a ThingSpeak cloud. So like that, you can use any cloud and let the data go to the ThingSpeak or a similar cloud. And from there, the data can be accessed and shown on the mobile phone. So in this way, all the information regarding uh, uh, say status of all the cows goes to the appropriate stakeholders. Now, next uh, uh, application uh, is this agriculture. Now, I will ask uh, some questions. Uh, there are many people uh, who might be uh, owning farms. So let us try to understand what kind of uh, problems are there in agriculture. And then we will discuss how to solve uh, those problems using IoT application. Now, I would like to request audience to ask the question or give the information what kind of problems are there uh, in the agricultural farm so that we will try to solve them with the help of IoT uh, devices. Okay, anybody would like to, um, I mean, uh, ask any question or uh, just say uh, what kind of problems have you seen in the farm? Okay, uh, some of the uh, problems are related to greenhouses, compost, wine quality enhancing, and meteorological station network. Now, greenhouses or uh, so called polyhouses. These are a, uh, uh, houses <coughs> which are, uh, 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 I mean, rather, which have controlled environment, agricultural environment. As you know, various crops require a different kind of environment. A tea and coffee teas is produced in Darjeeling. Then uh, onion is uh, produced in Maharashtra. Likewise, we have different crops uh, <clears throat> being produced in different uh, parts of the country only because these crops require different kind of environment. So if we want to grow uh, <clears throat> such plants in the nursery, we have to maintain and create a such environment. So the places where such environment is artificially created is called as greenhouse. So we can have a very good application of IoT in greenhouses, where we can apply IoT technology and we can control temperature, humidity, moisture, and uh, even light, and many such um, uh, parameters for the required crops. Another example is compost. The compost uh, also requires a specific uh, amount of humidity and temperature. So that can also be created using IoT. And as you know, that Nasik is also very famous for uh, Sula wines. A big winery is located in Nasik and uh, grapes. It is uh, wine is prepared out of grapes. Naturally, quality of wine uh, has to be enhanced so that it can be sold at good price. So IoT can be made. Uh, I mean, uh, can be applied in wine quality, uh, <clears throat> say, work. And uh, for that, what we do, we uh, use sensors to measure the moisture and trunk diameter of wine ads so that 
amount of sugar in every grape can be controlled properly. And thereby we can increase the quality of wine. Another example is meteorological station network. Knowledge of weather is very important for uh, the farmer. He should know when thunderstorm is going to take place, when uh, there would be a cold environment, and when it is going to be very, very hot, and so on. Such small meteorological stations can be uh, ejected throughout the country, and we can have a very precise data. Right now, farmer gets the data, but the data he gets is from a uh, television channel or from the um, some mobile apps. But this data is based on weather stations which are located at certain places. So, uh, for example, in Nashik city, in the collectorate office, there is a weather station. But a farmer staying 100 kilometer away does not have that station and his um, uh, uh, the information that he gets from Nasik city is not appropriate for his farm. So uh, we want to have a small uh, meteorological station right in his farm. And that is possible because now with good sensors and that too at the cost of hardly few hundred rupees can be bought and such a station can be erected in the farm and then that uh, information can be relayed through GSM board to the cloud. And once the information goes to the cloud, that is available to all the nearby farmers. So in this way, it is possible to uh, erect hundreds and hundreds of weather station, low cost weather station uh, in any part of the country and thereby provide uh, very uh, useful data to the nearby farmers. Now, this is another example. In metros like uh, uh, Pune, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Delhi, Indore, you have city malls, you have big malls and bazaars. Now, these are very huge buildings. And uh, there are many activities that need to be controlled. So now we want to apply IoT for that. So let us discuss what kind of activities can we control with the help of IO, IoT. So now the question is open to all the participants. So please, I mean, uh, raise your hand and ask the question or uh, just um, uh, tell me what kind of activity would you like to uh, control with the help of IOT? Uh, anybody? Okay. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Uh, here you can see there are lifts or elevators. There, uh, the lighting. So we have to control the elevators, which can be done with the help of IoT. Then lighting is to be controlled. That is during uh, daytime, lighting is to be minimized. And during night, that is after seven o'clock onward, the lights are to be uh, put on full brightness. And of course, after 10 o'clock, they are to be switched off. Then a proper ventilation is to be provided and it has to be uh, all the uh, fans and other things are to run during uh, working hour and on uh, uh, non-working hours, ventilation has to stop. Then again, air conditioning has to work during working hours. Otherwise, air conditioning should be stopped. And similarly, a uh, smoke detector has to be there. And as soon as there is a, uh, a fire, so we have to extinguish. Uh, that and for that we can use IoT and of course security is important. There could be some uh, intruders coming from windows or from uh, unauthorized gates and uh, that we have to prevent. 
So for all such activities, we can use IoT. So IoT is also very useful for uh, building automation. Okay, now this is a uh, scenario of uh, healthcare. There is a, a hospital uh, where the room is empty, but they, it is a full of uh, machines. So as far as the healthcare is concerned, or hospitals are concerned, uh, what kind of facilities uh, we would like to have, and uh, where I mean IoT is applied. So what kind of activities can we perform with the help of IoT so that we get better service? Okay, so let me uh, tell you that we can provide IoT-based glucose monitoring system for diabetes patients. You know that most of the elderly people in the, our country have a sugar problem. And naturally, they have to keep their sugar level in appropriate uh, range. If sugar goes beyond, let us say, uh, 300 or 400 gram, then it is a very uh, sensitive, uh, it becomes sensitive matter or a critical matter. And moreover, if sugar uh, goes below, let us say, uh, 50 gram, again, it is uh, dangerous. So it has to be maintained at appropriate level. And many uh, patients, elderly patients forget this and therefore uh, uh, suddenly emergency happens and they have to be rushed to the hospital. But now we can measure, we can apply IoT, uh, say device technology, whereby there will be a variable uh, a sensor put on the body of the patient and let the patient perform his uh, routine uh, uh, task. As and when the level of sugar goes high, the uh, alert will go to the doctor as well as, as alert goes to the uh, family members in the house or home. And immediately uh, people help the elderly person. So this is one good example of IOT. Another, when somebody gets a cancer, naturally proper uh, treatment is to be provided. Uh, many a times uh, a patient is put, put under radiation and he is advised to, uh, uh, I mean, take a, a particular type or specific type of food and also perform certain type of exercise and should not, I mean, overstress himself. So uh, by applying IoT trackers to the patient, the data is collected and sent to the doctor and based on his activities, patient's activities, doctor prepares a very good healthy plan for the patient and thereby saves the patient from death. So this is again, otherwise patient has to go to the hospital every day and take the appointment that is tedious. But with IoT devices, data gets communicated automatically to the doctor. And then there are also problems with the heart. There are many uh, people in our country who have heart disease. And as, here also, patients are advised to adopt a particular lifestyle. But people are fond of eating food in hotels and many times due to overeating, uh, their condition deteriorates. So in such cases, the status of heart condition is to be uh, told to the doctor so that appropriate uh, medicine can be prescribed by him. So here we apply IoT uh, variable device which measures the heart rate and sends this information to the doctor. So before any patient gets the heart attack, 
doctor is able to uh, prescribe the medicine and avoid that stroke. Now, uh, some people have asthma and many times it so happens that they forget their inhaler somewhere and uh, if they are not able to uh, get that uh, inhaler in time, their uh, uh, health becomes uh, out of control. So to avoid such critical things, we can mount variable tracking sensors into the inhaler and send that data to the mobile phone so that as and when patient is not able to locate inhaler, he can send the SMS and receive the location of that inhaler. So in this way, uh, uh, any um, uh, inhaler can be located uh, in a um, uh, very uh, short period of time. Then many big uh, hospitals have hundreds of devices like uh, uh, wheelchairs, uh, scales, uh, defibrillation uh, letters, uh, nebulizers, then uh, um, uh, uh, stretchers, and so on. So these items are normally movable. And because a uh, hospital is very big, it becomes very difficult to locate a particular item in uh, case of emergency. So by uh, using RFID, we can locate any asset in a given amount of time. So this is how location services uh, can be provided through IoT. The next uh, application is fault detection of patient, which we saw yesterday. So when a uh, patient uh, has a variable sensor on his chest or a wrist or anywhere, uh, placed anywhere on the body, and if he fa falls down, naturally, uh, indication will be sent to the cloud and doctor will be able to, or a nurse will be able to find out or identify which patient has, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, fell down. Similarly, uh, whether the medical fridges are working or not, remember, there are some critical uh, medicines like medicines related to a heart problem, sugar problem. These are very critical and these medicines uh, need to be kept at certain temperature. And in big hospitals, it might happen that some refrigerator may um, uh, become faulty and temperature may not be maintained. So in that case, the power of the medicine uh, is lost. So to keep watch on the working of the refrigerator, we can mount the temperature sensor in the refrigerator and get that data directly on our mobile phone or on the dashboard. And similarly, uh, some patients uh, do not, I mean, uh, stay at one place uh, on their bed. They simply keep on moving from floor to floor and sometimes they go, gay, go out of the hospital and again come back. So we can use IoT, particularly uh, surveillance camera, and keep watch on the patients. And the last application that I would like to tell you is that we can measure the eating habit of uh, patients. As you know, that for a healthy person, 1600 calorie is the suggested food. So every healthy person should consume 1600 calories uh, every day. But what happens? There are some people who, uh, I mean, love sweet and, and they do not do any exercise. For example, Shedji sitting on the uh, halwai shop. So such people only, I mean, uh, uh, keep sitting throughout the day on the chair and without much movement, but they keep on eating a lot of sugar, a uh, lot of, I mean, uh, sweet food like gulab jam and so on. So in a day, they consume more than 3000 calorie of food and they become very obese. On the contrary, poor people working on the construction, working in the construction industries, 
do not I, I mean have a food of appropriate calorie, very low calorie food they eat. And they, in fact, burn a lot of energy because they carry huge load uh, on the construction site. And they thereby get hardly uh, 800 or 900 calorie of, of uh, food. And therefore, uh, they become very, very uh, slim and uh, weak. So this kind of, um, uh, say, uh, health, particularly obese, can be detected using smart spoon. So variable sensors are mounted in the spoon. And if some uh, obese person tries to eat the food, of course, in India, we eat food through our hands. But in Western countries, people use spoon and uh, fork. So if somebody is eating food using spoon, the spoon will uh, allow the patient or allow the person to uh, keep on eating till he consumes 1600 calorie of food. And if thereafter, he tries to consume, let us say, one more gulab jam, and the calorie goes above 600, the spoon keeps on, uh, keeps on vibrating and the gulab jam uh, falls down. So this is how that person is prevented from uh, overeating. So in this way, we can imagine lot many applications of IoT in healthcare as well as many other places. So friends, so this was just, a, uh, I mean, uh, the idea of developing, uh, <clears throat> say, IoT project. Now we come to the uh, uh, exact way or scientific way of developing IoT project. So first we will consider some technologies related to IoT. First we will talk about the connectivity. So here we have Bluetooth, Zigbee, Sigfox, Wi-Fi, LAN, NFC, RFID, Ethernet, which we'll be using for connectivity. And then the types of projects, uh, protocols and standards that are available for IoT work are HTTP, uh, LoRaWAN, TCP, BLE, MQTT, AMQP, HomeKit, OpenIoT, and Nest. And then we have IoT platforms, which we also uh, studied yesterday. Some of them are Azure IoT Hub, AWS IoT Hub, Google Cloud, uh, ThingsWorks, Predix, and of course, uh, Thing Speak. So this is how, uh, I mean, these are some of the technologies. And now we enter into the, uh, say, strategy or methodology of development of IoT project. Before that, I would like to give you some demonstration. Let us try to have some live demonstrations of IoT. Uh, within just two minutes, uh, we will shift over to the uh, real life application where you can get the demonstration. And after seeing the demonstration, we will come back and then we will proceed with the scientific development of IoT project. So uh, just wait for two minutes. I request Gaurav sir to uh, make uh, Cognifrant as a co-host. जो मैं जो लेक्चर दूंगा फर्स्ट और सेकंड में आता दूंगा तो मेरा फर्स्ट एंड फोर्थ है ना तो मैं फर्स्ट और सेकंड क्योंकि इधर हमारे ग्रुप में इधर एग्जाम दूंगी की होगी ना तो मैं पहले से पढ़ रहा हूं ना तो बस ना बस हम्म
अच्छा तो एक एक फ्राइडे कल का है ना मैम कल का हेलो कल का मैं कल का मतलब आपका थर्ड जो तो मेरा सेकंड लेक्चर कल ही जाएगा हाँ हेलो हाँ गौरव सर कैन यू गेट मी बस नहीं है मेरा सेकंड लेक्चर है लेकिन सेकंड में मैं दर्द लाऊंगा है तो मैं थर्ड बोलूँ थर्ड थर्ड नहीं जाएगा मुझे हाँ गौरव सर कैन यू हेयर मी हेलो तो फर्स्ट में जाएगा हेलो हाँ गौरव सर कैन यू हेयर मी अच्छी बात कर दी कल के चीज में एक बार पता कर दीजिए मैं पता कर दीजिए पर पता कर दीजिए मैं पता कर दूँ हेलो 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 कैन यू हेयर मी यस हेलो हाँ जस्ट वन मिनट हाँ लेट मी कंटिन्यू ही इज लॉगिंग इन जस्ट वन मिनट Uh, hello, uh, Goro. Hello, ah, uh, uh, Goro. Uh, can you hear me? So Goro is in class, and Doctor Bangla. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, ah, uh, can you? I mean, uh, make the uh, Aditi Kulkarni as co-host. Aditi Kulkarni and Swaraj, or uh, I mean, Kogli friend. Yeah, yeah. I'll just uh, try. Ah, uh, Aditi Kulkarni and. Uh, cognifrant. Cognifrant. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so that so, we can see the li live demo. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, Avisha, can you do the needful? गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन एम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल ओके so good afternoon everyone so uh, just like yesterday we have some demos today we are also going to study some demos related to the things we cloud okay so mm -hmm. this demo is based on home automation system 
So home automation can be done by various ways. Like uh, if you have a remote control with you, it can also uh, yeah. control your appliances like light and fans and TVs. And okay. Yeah, please uh, turn on the video. Again. It is getting blur a little bit. Just in the middle of the Turn it again. Uh, so as I was mentioning, the Google uh, using Google Assistant. We can turn on and turn off our uh, appliances. For that, we have prepared one demo. And this demo explains how the home automation is done by using Google uh, uh, Google Assistant, ThingSpeak, and IFTT protocol. IFTT means uh, it is a service in which we can create our own uh, type of thing. Like uh, if I if I say uh, turn on the lamps, at that time it will uh, it will send a command to ThingSpeak channel. So that the ThingSpeak channel will receive ones or, or zeros depending on my command, like turn on the lamp or turn off the lamp. And uh, we are receiving the same inside uh, a home automation system based module. So this is our kit and uh, this is how we have prepared a demo. So in this kit, we have uh, symbolically prepared uh, these LEDs. So these LEDs are nothing but uh, your home appliances. Okay. And we are going to control these home appliances using a Google assistant. Okay. So now, uh, let me let me start my Google Assistant so that I can give commands to it. Still blur. Oh. Hmm. 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 Uh, is it visible to all or is it little blur? Okay. Now this is my Google assistant. Okay. And using the Google assistant. Now I will uh, turn on all these lamp or uh, turn on a lamp out of this three. Here you can see this lamp will turn on. Okay. Google, please turn on my lamp. Okay, Google, please turn on my lamp. Okay, now this lamp is on, which means uh, I have turned on uh, my appliances. Now it is time for turning it off. Okay, Google, please turn off my lamp. Okay, uh, the delay is because of uh, ThingSpeak. So ThingSpeak has a 15 seconds delay on the refreshing point. So this was about the first uh, home automation system using Google Assistant. My, now my next demo is based on another uh, with the same concept, but just one thing is there. We have designed one app. So using that app, we can turn on and turn off the devices. Again, I have this uh, kit on which I have prepared a symbolic demonstration. In this demo, we're going to do the same thing, but here I'm not going to say anything. That means it is not a voice command based. It is app based uh, home automation. So this is my app. Okay. So yesterday we have studied about, this is my app. Here you can see. Is it visible to all? Is it visible to all? Yes, sir. Now, yesterday we have uh, gone through with some of the concepts like write API key and read API key. So out of that, because we are uh, sending some value of ones and zeros, uh, we will going to use a API key known as write API key. So this will uh, take out the data from this app and it will send it to the thing speak using write API key. So only I have to uh, copy my write API key into uh, a given thing.
Here we go. I'm I'm about to copy the right API key over here. Here we go. Can you see the API key? Okay. Now it's time to turn on the light. Now here you can see the light has been turned on. Okay. Now let me turn off this light. This light. This is it. There is a delay because of again uh, things speak limitations are there. Yeah. Now here you can see the light is off. Okay. So using uh, these types of apps and voice assistant, we can turn on and turn off uh, our uh, home appliances. And the basic concept behind it is your ThingSpeak Cloud. So you can develop these types of applications uh, using ThingSpeak Cloud. So this was about the demonstration part. Now in short, again, we will continue with the theory and related operations. Thank you so much. Okay, anyone uh, has any questions related to this? Let's have some interaction meanwhile before uh, getting through to the next part. So I would like to ask if any anyone has a question related to it or anything, uh, anyone uh, wants to say anything. So it is your platform, you can uh, interact with us. Any questions? Am I audible to all? Yes, so you are audible. Okay, Mayur sir is saying no, sir, but extremely uh, interesting. So yes, indeed, ThingSpeak is an interesting platform. Actually, every cloud platform has some uh, interesting parts. So uh, it is glad to know that uh, you are also enjoying uh, the uh, ThingSpeak world. Anyone else wants to say anything? How Google Assistant do this? Okay, so uh, we use this Google Assistant in a service known as IF Triple T. IF Triple T means if this, then that. So uh, using that IFTT, the computer. Yes. Uh, now can we shift? Shift over. Okay. Now here you can see a website known as IF, IF Triple T. Using this, we can create our own applets. So uh, Google Assistant will work like uh, for, will work as our uh, condition. So here I have created one applet known as a request. Okay, if you say okay Google turn on my lamp, then make a request. Now behind this, I have stated conditions like if this then that. Okay. So in this, I have uh, I have a Google Assistant based uh, applet. Okay. So a simple phrase okay Google turn on my lamp or uh, if if I am a Marathi, then in Marathi I will say Chal salu kar baba, or another way turn on the lamp. So it will update this. It will just take this phrase from the Google Assistant, and it will fire a reaction of making a web request. Now we have seen this uh, yesterday that in uh, uh, in ThingSpeak we have some API requests. So using that API request link, I have uh, fired some values like ones and zeros on my uh, phrases or statements. So this is how the Google Assistant work. Google Assistant just take take out those phrases, and your email account is responsible for connecting uh, all this uh, if this then that uh, based thing. So this is how it works. Anything else? Any more? Any more questions? Okay, so thank you so much for uh, your enthusiastic response on my demos. Now it is time for uh, going back to our uh, main focus again, 
so i request tiwari sir to continue with uh, uh, with his later part and okay thank you so much uh, thank you suraj so let us continue okay. Uh, is the screen visible to everybody? Uh, hello. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, fine. Uh, so now we come to uh, the important part, namely scientific theory of project development. There are three important components of any IoT project. namely iot hardware some kind of connectivity is required and cloud is required and cloud is uh, responsible for capturing the data processing the data and storing the data into the database and after that uh, sending the command performing the analytics and uh, giving that data back to the players iot development stack consists of five important parts that is every iot device will have hardware will have software will have connectivity will have operating system in uh, some cases but it is not essential uh, and then there will be some kind of application so these five parts are required in any iot uh, device so now look carefully uh, to this diagram in any iot system or a device there would be one or more sensors actuators microcontroller gateway and cloud sensors and actuators are connected to the microcontroller so microcontroller captures the data given by sensor and then a microcontroller does some kind of processing and that information or processed data goes to the gateway now gateway is nothing but the connectivity a uh, uh, connectivity device which connects the microcontroller and the cloud in our home we have wifi router so wifi router in our home behaves like a gateway but there could be a situation where there are thousands of microcontrollers in the factory and data needs to be sent to the cloud so there will be a bigger uh, kind of router which we call as a gateway so these four components sensor actuator microcontroller gateway and cloud will be required in any iot device the data goes from sensor to the microcontroller from microcontroller to the gateway and from gateway to the cloud and in the cloud data is processed and some action is to be taken now based on the decision so that action is to be taken by the actuator so cloud sends the data to the gateway from gateway data goes to the microcontroller and from microcontroller again data goes to the actuator so it is a two way journey data from the sensor goes to the microcontroller to the gateway and to the cloud and after processing analyzing and making decision command is sent back to the gateway from there it goes to microcontroller and microcontroller sends the command to the actuator and actuator actually performs the job so this is how any iot device will work now uh, as far as the hardware device is concerned as i told we have to select hardware components suitable to the uh, given project at hand as an example let us say if it is a irrigation system we have to select that uh, uh, sensor to measure moisture and interact with the pump so moisture of the soil is to be detected and it goes above certain threshold 
then pump is to be started. On the contrary, in home security system, our sensor will be a motion sensor. So if some intruder comes in the home, it has to detect the motion and send the alarm. So in this way, we have to develop IoT project from the custom built hardware. So for every uh, different IoT application, we have to select appropriate sensors, microcontrollers, connectivity device, and type of um, uh, clouds. So uh, typical uh, hardware uh, will consist of, as I told, sensor, actuator, microcontroller, and some connectivity device. Uh, for uh, students and academicians, usually found devices are Arduino, ESP8266 or ESP32 board, STM32, and other microcontrollers like uh, Raspberry Pi. Of course, other uh, microcontrollers are there, but they are very costly. Uh, they are industrial grade uh, microcontrollers and th they are to be used for real life IoT projects. Now the second component is naturally software. Now software also depends on the type of microcontroller we select. The software for ARM microcontroller, software for Raspberry Pi, and software for Arduino microcontroller would be different. Moreover, uh, some microcontrollers come with operating system. So if microcontroller does not have operating system, then programming uh, is different for different microcontroller. But there's a good news that during last few years, many uh, engineers have developed software platform for ESP8266 and ESP32, which runs on the Arduino platform. So you do not have to use any other uh, platform for uh, ESP32 or STM32. You can use the same Arduino programming for these two boards. But for other microcontrollers, definitely you have to select different uh, platform, different languages. <coughs> uh, another good news is that many manufacturers like uh, STM manufacturer provides its own development tool for writing programs in such microcontrollers. And for writing programs on Raspberry type of microcontroller is quite standard because Raspberry Pi comes with operating system, namely Linux or Windows, but Linux is very popular. So we can install Linux operating system on Raspberry Pi and thereafter the whole development uh, runs on Linux. So you don't have to bother about the underlying hardware. So microcontrollers with uh, certain operating system uh, are easy to uh, program, but otherwise bare microcontrollers are a bit difficult. You require good understanding of embedded system. And of course, connectivity is uh, the um, uh, essential part of any IoT device because we have to ultimately send data to the internet and from there it has to go to the cloud. So sending data to the internet requires either Wi-Fi router or GSM board or a satellite connectivity. So in short, for connecting any microcontroller device to the internet, we can use either Wi-Fi connectivity or GPRS, uh, that is cellular connectivity means we can connect uh, devices uh, to the cloud via uh, telephone towers, which we call as cellular connectivity. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल आवर मोबाइल फोन इज कनेक्टेड टू द इंटरनेट वाया सेल्युलर कनेक्टिविटी ऑन द कॉन्ट्री आवर डेस्कटॉप एंड लैपटॉप आर कनेक्टेड टू द इंटरनेट वाया वाईफाई राउटर now uh, you may wonder why not all of us uh, select let us say wifi and uh, not uh, gsm or a cellular connectivity or why um, cellular connectivity is not used everywhere there is reason uh, in cities where we work and live most of the houses and offices have wifi routers and therefore there is no necessity of having cellular connectivity of course cellular connectivity is little bit costly as compared to wifi connectivity so in cities and uh, um, uh, in cities uh, offices and homes have wifi connectivity but when you go to rural area let us say you want to develop some agricultural iot application naturally in agricultural farms there is no router uh, available anywhere so the only way is to use cellular connectivity because in our country in india and all over the world uh, uh, mobile towers are available everywhere even in uh, uh, villages we have mobile towers so uh, using uh, cellular connectivity in uh, agriculture farms we can uh, develop any iot application so in this way you have to select appropriate connectivity depending on where you are located so if you are located in such places where wifi connectivity is not there we have to use cellular okay uh, some of the communication technologies that we need to use in any iot platform or in a iot application are Wi-Fi connectivity, uh, RFID or NFC connectivity, GSM or GPRS connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, LoRa WAN connectivity, and narrow band IoT connectivity. LoRa WAN stands for Long Range Wide Area Network. So there are communication devices called LoRa. which can uh, send the signal as long as 10 km uh, without any wifi or without any uh, gsm connectivity so no wifi connectivity and no uh, say cellular connectivity is required directly you can send data from one location to other location uh, and that too at a distance of 10 km so we have a choice lot many technologies for connectivity to the internet are available and depending on uh, the project that is the type of project uh, location of project cost of the project uh, budget uh, time of the uh, completion of the project and so many factors are there so based on all such factors we have to select appropriate connectivity device then we also have within the connectivity we also have appropriate uh, protocols for example even with wifi we have a choice on the wifi we can have http connective uh, uh, protocol we can use web socket protocol we can use mqtt protocol or we can use amqp protocol these are the methods of sending data via any communication technology for example here we talk about the wifi connectivity but the protocol on the wifi could be http protocol or web socket protocol or mqtt protocol so connectivity technologies and protocols are different things so we have messaging communication protocols listed here http is a bit heavy but it is very popular everywhere we normally use http when we send emails to our friends or when you use whatsapp a uh, web sockets are used where you require a small amount of header to be sent 
and want continuous connectivity. And MQTT is particularly very useful in industries where the bandwidth available is very, very small. Nowadays with fiber optics, bandwidth is increasing day by day, but in the past there, it was very scarce uh, resource. Bandwidth was available in kilo um, say bits. Even today, uh, in many uh, parts of the country, uh, in, uh, service is very poor. So there we can use MQTT. And also where uh, we have to use the uh, IoT device around the clock, naturally uh, MQTT uh, cost will be lower than HTTP cost. Now comes the uh, cloud. Yesterday we <coughs> talked about cloud and various layers of the cloud, but today we will have a small introduction and then uh, uh, understand how cloud is useful and how to use cloud in IoT project development. In the cloud, we transform the data, we apply business logic, we store the data, and ultimately uh, we uh, provide the application for the users to work on. For example, uh, Facebook or maybe the WhatsApp cloud that provides us all the facility. That is, we can share the data, we can uh, receive uh, information, we can send the song, whatever I mean. So all that is happening through the cloud. So a uh, cloud also provides the uh, interaction between whatever application you write on the mobile phone and the IoT device. And uh, similarly, uh, cloud receives the data from the uh, IoT device and sends the command to the uh, uh, actuator so that our work is done. Now, while writing the cloud program, we have to be very careful. We have to see that messaging uh, message received from the device, that is uh, a receiving layer, and the message sent to the actuator that is processing layer are put separately. Otherwise they will get intermingled and uh, our IoT project may not work properly. Then we have to also keep um, uh, offline devices um, in consideration because many times uh, there is a discontinuity. All of a sudden we are using, let us say WhatsApp and we lose the connection. But as soon as the connection comes, uh, again, our WhatsApp starts working. So that kind of uh, thing is to be um, uh, kept in mind while writing the uh, cloud uh, program. And moreover, while writing the uh, or selecting the cloud, we have to see that cloud is able to do on the air updates of the IoT devices. Remember, in any big IoT application, there could be thousands of sensors applied on a wide area. And if some uh, change is to be made in the uh, software of the sensor, you have to move from sensor to sensor manually, physically, and open up the sensor and reprogram the sensor, which is a very tedious job. So what we want, we want a methodology by which we should be able to update the sensor right from the server because all these sensors are ultimately connected to the cloud. So from the cloud, we should be able to update any sensor through the method called as on the air or OTA, OTA update. And of course, all communication should be secure. Secure means, let us say, uh, there is one uh, sensor uh, connected to a boiler. And if that uh, somebody hacks the sensor, the boiler will uh, keep on um, uh, heating up and will reach a point where it will blast and create a big accident in the factory. This is simply because the temperature sensing sensor is not working. So uh, IoT system will lose the track and it will simply uh, put on the heater and uh, boiler will keep on heating up. Had there been a sensor, as soon as temperature goes, let us say uh, at certain degrees, 
then IoT system will take action and shut down the uh, heater. But if a sensor is hacked up, then uh, IoT system will fail. So we have to see that our data, which flows from sensor to the cloud and back from cloud to the, uh, let us say, actuator is secure. Another example I can tell you is that, let us say we have connected all our cars to the cloud. Remember, uh, such connected cars are coming. In fact, in certain parts of the world, uh, so-called driverless cars are already running on the road and they are already connected to the cloud. So all the data from the car goes to the cloud, decision is made and data comes back to the car and controlling uh, is done. So uh, there is uh, a, a very vulnerable uh, situation. For example, somebody hacks the uh, data of driverless car and thereby does not, I mean, uh, uh, provide a command to the brake. So naturally, car will overrun somebody and kill the person because barrier, a brake may not work, the data has been hacked. So in such critical applications, we have to see that uh, uh, all the flow of data, either from device to cloud or cloud to device or in between is highly secured. Then we have to also provide the authentication. That is, we should be 100% sure that data coming from a specific sensor really comes from the same sensor. Otherwise, what will happen? A, uh, a data from one car will go to the cloud. Cloud will process something and send the data and data might go to some other car. So, uh, uh, if something uh, goes wrong in one car, that will affect the working of the other car unnecessarily. So in uh, IoT project development, you have to see, you have to consider that data is highly secured and data is authenticated. That is the data that comes from a specific uh, sensor is identified as coming from the same sensor. Okay, now another important uh, part. When huge amount of data goes to the cloud, decision is made based on that data. For example, all the data of some college ultimately goes to the principal and then principal is uh, supposed to make the decision based on uh, all the data. Similarly, when huge amount of data goes to the cloud, the cloud processes the data and makes certain uh, critical decisions. And for that, we require another technology so-called data analytics or artificial intelligence or machine learning and of course big data. Using this uh, big data and uh, machine learning, very interesting applications can be uh, generated or created where human intervention is <clears throat> not required at all, like a driverless car. In such autonomous car, it is a machine learning algorithm running in the cloud and also at the edge, uh, uh, edge cloud, we can say in the, on the edge, that car is able to make the decision on its own and move along the road. If there is a left turn ahead, the car will automatically take the left turn. So all such autonomous decisions are taken based on the results created by machine learning or artificial intelligence. Okay, now let us start uh, again with a uh, new uh, ideas that is about the stages in the project development. When you want to stitch a new garment for you, what you do? First, you go to the tailor. And it is, uh, the tailor actually takes the measurement of your length, your chest, your uh, breast, and so on. So based on the, uh, uh, those measurements, he stitches the garment, and uh, you are happy with that. 
Similarly, when we want to develop any IoT project for anybody, our very first thing is to visit the place, talk to the concerned people, that is stakeholders, get the requirements, study the requirements, and then proceed. So without requirements analysis, we cannot do a very good IoT project development. So that is called as requirements analysis and defining of functionalities. So requirements and functionalities play important role. The first, therefore, the first phase of product development begins with what customer wants. <clears throat> if customer wants two pockets on the shirt, we have to stitch two pockets. I mean, we should not justify that you have only, I mean, only one pocket is enough. If client wants two pockets, tailor has to stitch two pockets. Similarly, if some client wants <clears throat> some kind, uh, I mean, uh, has some kind of requirements, you have to fulfill it. So we have to understand what customer wants and what kind of functionality is to be added to that uh, IoT uh, say device. And moreover, we have to find the right technology uh, which suits the uh, client. If client is poor naturally, you have to suggest the technology which is suitable for that poor, uh, say, uh, industry. If some uh, client is very rich and he wants everything uh, uh, very hi-fi, naturally you can think of uh, good quality uh, components as well as the uh, uh, more robust and more reliable uh, kind of uh, technology. So in this way, first you have to understand what a client wants and then proceed for the next stage. As we know, the very first stage is a requirements analysis, then comes the design. Then we start designing uh, the project. Okay. Now what we do, once we understand the requirements, then we have to think what kind of ecosystem is available? What is the size of the project? What format is required? And what hardware and software is required? And for that, we have to make a decision that should we carry out the whole IoT project ourselves or should we uh, break down the work and outsource some of the work to third party. Because in many cases, IoT project development is very heterogeneous and lot of <clears throat> efforts of lot of people are involved. Different technologies are involved. For example, uh, you require embedded system experts. You require uh, software experts. You require <clears throat> web developers. You require cloud. You require administrators. So it is not a one-man job. So you have to think which part of the project should be outsourced so that your project gets completed in given time. And therefore, uh, we have to think of outsourcing. Then comes the concept of uh, a proof of concept that is POC or piloting. Before we start developing any IoT project, let us say if that project is worth, let us say five crore rupees, we can't simply, I mean, buy lots of uh, sensors and actuators and microcontrollers and uh, employ hundreds of people and start working. No. The very first uh, 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 idea about this is proof of concept. So first we should try to uh, develop a proof of concept that is try to develop a very simple, uh, small scale, uh, say model of the whole project, which may require just few thousand rupees to develop. So instead of spending crores of rupees and at the end of that expenditure to come to know that project cannot be done. It happens uh, 
and it has been, it is happening in the industry that more than 60% projects are failing. So it's a surprising thing that not all IoT projects are successful. There are many difficulties encountered by people. So instead of wasting huge amount of money, we should first develop the so-called proof of concept. That is a pilot. So prepare a very small, uh, say, uh, <coughs> pilot uh, or prototype and give the uh, proof that concept is workable. Show this uh, proof of concept to the stakeholders, consult uh, stakeholders, right? It could be uh, owner of the uh, plant, uh, it could be manager, yeah, or there could also be uh, workers. Uh, and you have to see whether uh, your concept is appealing to them or not. So you have to create a workable model of the actual system that is called as proof of concept. <clears throat> and once the proof of concept is done, then you have to start <clears throat> uh, developing the uh, product. That is, you have to go into the production. During production also, there are many uh, points where you have to look outside. As an example, if you want to develop, let us say, a mobile phone in your own company, remember, even Apple Corporation of USA does not manufacture mobile phone in America. They outsource manufacturing to China. So all the Apple phones are manufactured in China, even though they are designed in USA. So similarly, there may be some parts which you cannot manufacture uh, in uh, your home or uh, at your place. So in that case, you have to look outside. Then go about um, meeting all the concerned experts and tell them uh, your requirements and get the work done from those people. Then bring that uh, parts together and prepare the uh, prototype. So while other people are doing work for you, you have to um, observe critically how things are being manufactured because not all parts are manufactured at your place. And for that matter, you have to uh, be very critical during production of your project. And you have to do also early product testing. If you do uh, early product testing, all the faults uh, will be known to you and you can uh, repair them in time. Then you have to also provide the logistic support uh, in the sense uh, if you are um, outsourcing a production uh, responsibility somewhere, then uh, you have to talk to those people uh, uh, and look for uh, quality control, documentation, and many other things. So this kind of logistic support is also to be developed. And ultimately, you have to um, look at the life cycle management. Once the product is uh, designed, developed, and deployed, that is, it is put to uh, work, then you have to keep on watching how your product is working in the field. This is necessary because not all products are ultimate products. Every product needs some kind of uh, update. Your, your, uh, even software that is installed in your mobile phone at the time of purchase needs update. So you keep on updating the software. Similarly, any IoT uh, product is also to be updated. Its new version is to be given. Like cars, every year we come with new model, new version of a car. So you have to keep watch how, the, how your product is uh, working in the field. And if some problem is found or if you, uh, uh, some good suggestion comes, uh, you can incorporate all such things in the new version. The kind of uh, uh, development services that you can outsource are design and engineering, then hardware and firmware development, that is uh, PCP development, soldering, and all, all that you can outsource. Then prototyping can also be outsourced. There are firms. And then manufacturing, uh, you can outsource. There are many manufacturing industries around. You can do that. For example, ESP32 microcontroller is designed by one firm which does not have manufacturing uh, facility, but they get the ESP32 uh, board manufactured from China.
Okay, now we go. Now we come to the last part of today's session. Namely, uh, there are two models of IoT development. So IoT uh, project can be developed following these two uh, models, namely waterfall model and agile model. But these days, agile model has been found to be more suitable for IoT development rather than waterfall model. And I hope all of you come from a computer background so you know what is waterfall model. So waterfall model follows a linear approach where development starts from a system the requirement analysis, then goes to the design, then goes to the development, then through the testing, then deployment, and then maintenance. So this sequence of development is definitely a very good and disciplined thing, but unfortunately, uh, it is not suitable for IoT. It is suitable for uh, many other fields like manufacturing field, production, and even for software development, uh, waterfall uh, is, I mean, uh, good, but for IoT, waterfall fall model uh, is found to be uh, not good at all. So, um, uh, uh, in a waterfall model, uh, these are the steps followed, that is requirement gathering, analysis, planning, design, development, testing, and deployment. Now we come to the interesting methodology called as agile methodology. It is a project management methodology characterized by building products using short cycles of work that allow for rapid production and constant revision. In waterfall model, companies actually set the goal and keep on working that project for a period of one year, two year, three year, depending on the requirement of the project. But what happens during this long period of time of let us say one year or two year, many things happen. Many people leave the company, many new people join the company. More or there is a, a new kind of technology comes in the market and the requirement keeps on changing. So in this way, when the requirement changes, the project which is completed after a period of two years becomes useless. So it is to be thrown away. And that is why for IoT development, we use so-called agile framework or agile methodology. In this methodology, we do not have a plan of two or three years. We naturally uh, prepare a plan of, let us say one week, two week or one month, not more than one month. And in during every plan, we try to finish uh, uh, the whole cycle of project development. That is after, let us say, one week, we again uh, iterate and we start developing, uh, recycling the development uh, as a second uh, iteration, and then third iteration till the project is completed. So uh, understanding requirement, uh, uh, working on that, and ultimately uh, finishing it, uh, reviewing it, and then again beginning uh, once again. So we carry out small work at a time and then keep on uh, adding new and new uh, work to the existing work and thereby we complete the whole project after some iterative cycles. So here we, uh, um, part of the agile methodology, it is a way to manage the project by breaking it up in several phases. So we, break the total project into several phases and uh, run through those phases uh, weekly basis or on uh, monthly basis. So this small module, a small uh, part in which the agile work is broken down is called as sprint. So agile projects are broken down into sprints or iterations. A sprints are short, repeatable phases, typically one or four weeks long. The number of length of sprints is determined by the, at the beginning of the project. So at the beginning of the project, we decide that we will be having a one month sprint or 
a one week print or two week print. <clears throat> that is, we try to break down the project into bite size chunk so that we can manage the development very comfortably. <clears throat> now, once we break down the total project every week or maybe every month, we make the planning for one sprint. So that is called as sprint planning. The project manager gathers the team to determine how much work can be completed, let us say within one sprint. If sprint length is one week, that is, uh, so we, uh, uh, project manager uh, discusses the matter with the uh, team and decides what to do in that particular week. This is called as sprint planning. <clears throat> and then on daily basis, which is called as a daily scrum, on daily basis, the project manager uh, gathers the uh, team member and asks them what, uh, what has, has been uh, accomplished and uh, in the last meeting and uh, what will be done on the next meeting and if there are any obstacles standing in their way. In short, a project manager uh, brings all team members together and uh, takes the review and discusses about the difficulties they encounter and tries to solve them. But this is done every day. So every day he reviews that. <clears throat> and then at the end of the sprint, let us say if sprint is, let us say one week uh, sprint or two week sprint or one month sprint. So at the end of the sprint, every sprint, uh, the team members have to demonstrate the sprint output. What, uh, what is the output of the sprint? Then what was uh, completed during that sprint and what was not completed in the sprint? And of course, uh, what should we do uh, in the next sprint? So this is how uh, sprint by sprint dis discussion is held and the project uh, continues. Uh, so uh, this is the, um, uh, I can say, uh, agile methodology. The agile, uh, the, the advantage of agile methodology is that during uh, every sprint, you are uh, taking the progress report, you are going through the project, you are reviewing it, and you are forecasting, you are solving difficulties, you are testing, you are designing, means you are doing lot many um, uh, types of activities in every sprint and therefore if there are any uh, problems uh, encountered those can be solved uh, quite in early stages whereas in waterfall model you are developing stage by stage and let us say uh, your uh, deployment stage comes after one and a half year so the error or the problems will be uh, disclosed only one and a half year afterwards in the deployment stage. So you have already lost uh, one and a half year and then you come to know about the difficulty. But in uh, this agile methodology, in every sprint, that is every month or maybe every week, you are going through all the tasks and uh, problems that you encounter. You have enough time to fix them quite in uh, early stage. So friends, uh, I have Another uh, last point to discuss with you, and I leave the concept uh, to you of IoT development. I'm, talk I'm going to talk about the cold chain management. In our country, which we call that uh, India is a agricultural country, huge amount of agricultural products uh, crop is produced every year. Bumper uh, production happens in Punjab. So, most of the vegetables and there are many even industrial products which need to be carried from one location to other location. Vegetables are produced in villages and those are sold in metros. For example, uh, uh, vegetables in uh, uh, villages in Nashik are transported to the Mumbai. So during this transport, the temperature of vegetables, temperature and humidity is to be controlled. Otherwise, a vegetable will become stale and then uh, 
uh, after some time, it will get rotten and may not be usable at all. It's a perishable good. So most of the perishable goods are to be transferred from one location to other location and also they are to be stored at uh, appropriate temperature. Uh, these days, uh, in most of the uh, most part of the countries, milk is produced in the dairy, and it is carried to the metros via uh, cold refrigerated uh, vehicles. And that is why you get cold milk early in the morning at your door. So the whole chain of transportation from the source to destination is called as cold chain system. So this cold chain has to be managed properly. And for that, special type of trucks are used. So you, you might see such trucks running on the highway. They carry such perishable goods like milk, maybe vegetables, and many other such things. <clears throat> now we want to apply IoT for cold chain management. Now, as far as the cold chain is concerned, you are concerned with the storage of goods, transport of goods, and of course, preservation. So source, manufacturing, transportation, storage, supply, and sale good, all uh, they are involved. And supply chain, uh, cold uh, management chain is concerned with, uh, as far as the factory is concerned, raw material supplier, raw material, uh, uh, goes to the manufacturer uh, is a warehouse. So uh, from raw material supplier, uh, for example, it could be a raw material for medicine. It goes to warehouse, from warehouse it goes to the manufacturer and from manufacturer it goes to the wholesaler or it may lie again in the warehouse at the manufacturer site, then it will go to the retailer and from retailer, it goes to the consumer. Uh, if we uh, apply this to the milk, milk uh, is a raw material. It comes from, let us say, uh, a farm, then goes to the sto uh, cold storage, then goes to the, let, let us say, um, uh, uh, this uh, uh, curd maker, or maybe uh, ice cream maker. And from there, it goes to the wholesaler, goes to the retailer, and ultimately we consume ice cream over here. Now, uh, there are many advantages uh, of uh, cold chain. For example, uh, we can, I mean, there is an optimization of de delivery schedule. So delivery schedule can be maintained very properly. Then uh, paperwork is re uh, removed. Then delay in day-to-day uh, -day operation is removed. Uh, audit can be done systematically. Then cost of delays. It happens that during transport, some uh, delay happens, so that can be reduced. And then uh, product loss, for example, if product is not uh, transported in time and being perishable, uh, it gets wasted and there is a loss to the uh, owner. So that can be uh, removed and then we can improve the branding of that particular company. So there are so many advantages of cold chain management. So as an exercise, uh, you are supposed to uh, work on this project and try to develop a very simple prototype for cold chain management as part of uh, IoT project development for you or for your student or for any industry. So friends, I come to the end of uh, today's session. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I uh, open the session for question and answer. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your thoughts. We are grateful for your time and effort which you took to share your knowledge and experience with us.